generally the parts are not written until after the music is recorded. It seems weird to say that, but when when the when the usually I arrange the music by myself and I do as much as I can by myself. I play the keyboard, I'll play a bass line, you know, I'll um I'll add some drum, you know, a, a drum loop or a take it as far as I can by myself and then if I feel that I need more then I'll bring in a bass player or a percussionist or, or a drummer and I'll say you know can you embellish on this and sometimes I write out a part but usually if you bring someone into the studio you want them to use their creativity to come up with something that you couldn't think of you know if I write a part out it's just one more idea that's coming from me and after a while all my ideas kind of get stale if you like, like I'm using the same ideas over and over again. I need fresh ideas. I need to bring someone in who will have a different approach to this song. So usually I'll say, hey, knock yourself out. Just play whatever you feel and then uh, we'll see what, what happens. So I don't really, I don't generally like to write things out for other people. I mean, I, I have done certain times there's a bass line, like there's a song, um, Caravan of Dreams, on my Caravan of Dreams CD. Uh, and there's a very specific bass part that I wanted, so I actually wrote it out. Um, which was another good thing about going to UCLA to that night course, because I learned to, re to write music, not only to read music, but to write music. And all my years with Al Stewart, we never wrote anything down. There was never any music written for any of that music. It was all done by memory and you know by ear. Nothing was ever written. Nobody could read music. <laughs> that's, the, that's the truth of it. It's only when I crossed over into the jazz world that I started coming up with uh, people that, uh, you know, meeting with people that actually could read, read music, read charts, and demanded that I give them a chart. If I'm, if I'm going to play with you, I need a chart. I don't want to sit there l listening to the song 20 times before it enters my head. I want a chart. Well, I don't read the charts. I never play from a chart. In fact, I couldn't on the guitar because I don't associate the notes with the guitar. On piano, I could. I can read pia music on piano, but on the guitar, it's foreign to me. I have never learned, I've never played music on the guitar by reading music because I really can't. Um, but when other people, like a bass player or a keyboard player that comes in to play with me, I say, well, you know, we've got uh, two hours of music that you have to learn. And they say, well, give me the charts. So now I have all the charts. I uh, used to write them out by hand. <laughs> now I do it on the computer, and now it's all done by PDF. Somebody wants a chart, you don't even print out the chart and mail it off, you just send them a PDF. And um, then they print it out for themselves. It's, it's, so, it's a whole new world, you know. It's, it's much easier this way. But yeah, it's, a, it's an interesting question that you ask, that uh, you know, when you're reading music, does it become mechanical? Well, the simple answer is I don't read music on the guitar. And still, I'm I'm still back. When it comes to playing the guitar, I'm still back when I, you know, when I was seven years old, learning to play by listening to the radio. I learned to, I learn what I need to learn on the guitar, what I need to know by listening, not by reading. <laughs>